Teacher talking sports, what it does, what it do, how we live in. In eight short days, the BBWAA will announce their voting for the 2023 class. Looks like it might be Scott Rowland or nobody but from Griff will at least get inducted. A few days ago, I did a video on the 10 best wars from players not in the Hall of Fame with a few qualifiers, such as guys um, with PED accusations or suspensions couldn't be included well today i'm kind of going to look at the opposite end of the spectrum today we're going to take a look at the 10 worst wars for players in the hall of fame so um it's only mlb so if you player played most of his career in the negro leagues he won't be included we're looking at mlb um to be honest a lot of you guys might not know these guys again they're not well-known players such as the guys I named earlier, the Willie Mays, the Hank Aarons, the Bob Gibsons. No, they are not them, but they are in Cooperstown, and that can never be taken away from them. Expect to see a lot of black and white photos uh, until the video is done, as most of these players are well, well in the past. So we'll go from 10 to 1, the highest of the 10, to the lowest war in the Hall of Fame. Starting at 10th, Ray Schalk, 33.2 uh, war. Uh, the catcher was a part of the 1917 White Sox that won the World Series, but altogether batted just 253 with a 656 OPS, 11 homers, and... Uh, 199 doubles in 6,244 plate appearances. Ninth, Ross Young's 32.7. Young's did win two World Series as well, played 10 seasons with the Giants. Since he only played 10 seasons, his career really wasn't that bad. Led the league in runs once, had three seasons with over 100, had a season with over 100 RBIs. More so because his career was only 10 seasons that he's on here. Uh, but eighth, Jesse Haynes, 32.6. Jesse Haynes did win 210 games and three World Series in his career, but had a 3.64 ERA, which gave him an ERA plus just 9% better than the average pitcher in that time. Uh, did pitch well in the World Series, though, three and one with a 1.67 ERA. Seventh, we have Rube Marquard. Uh, Marquard was a pitcher, went 201 and 177 with a 3.08 ERA. Did lead the league in wins in 1912 with 26 and strikeouts with 237, which is a lot for that era. In 1911, uh, but again, pitched an error where runs weren't. At a premium, his 103 ERA plus, just 3% better than the average pitcher. Sixth, Chick Hafey, 31.2. Uh, did win two World Series. Uh, Hafey won a batting title in the NL in 1931. A career 317 hitter with an 894 OPS. So pretty, pretty good marks there. Had three seasons with over 100 RBIs. Three straight seasons with over 100 runs. Both 100 runs and 100 RBIs from 1928 to 1935. Fifth, we have Rick Farrell, catcher, 30.8. It was an eight-time All-Star in a career that spanned from 1929 to 1947. But in 18 seasons, 281 batting average, just a 363 slugging percentage. So very rarely got extra base hits, just 28 homers in his career. Rick Furrow, fifth lowest war. Fourth, the little poison to Paul Wainer's big poison, Lloyd Wainer, 29.6. Wainer did bat 316. In his career, majority of seasons batting over 300, but had under a 400 slugging percentage, had an OPS plus under 100 for his career, uh, hit just 27 homers, and had 598 RBIs, but did lead the league in runs as a rookie with 133. Third, Freddie Lindstrom, 28.3. Lindstrom played from 1924 to 1936. Did bat 311 in his career. Uh, 
Did have 103 homers, 779 RBIs, 895 runs scored in 13 seasons. Led the league in hits in 1928. Uh, got caught stealing more than he stole. 84 stolen bases, the 99 caught stealings. Rarely walked, 347 on base percentage. Second, High Pockets Kelly. Awesome nickname, uh, but his war. Nothing to sneeze about. 25.9 war. I uh, played 16 seasons in the big leagues, batting 297. Hit 148 homers. Did have over 1,000 RBIs. 1,020. Had five seasons with over 100 RBIs. And uh, 819 runs in his career. Uh, so his numbers don't look that bad. Won two World Series, but war isn't quite fond of him. And by far far the lowest war in the hall of fame is tommy mccarthy played from 1884 to 1896 in 13 seasons a 14.6 war batted 292 for his career i did have over a thousand runs 1066 had seven straight seasons with over 100 runs from 1888 to 1894 two seasons with over 100 rbis led the league with 83 stolen bases in 1890 had at least 468 for his career uh, but again war baseball reference war not too fond of tommy mccarthy by far the lowest war in the hall of fame and I actually read that it was believed that he may have invented the hit and run, I think it was, but they found out it was he wasn't, and they said that might have been part of the reason he was elected. Of course, none of these analytics, there was no such thing as war when most of these players played. Heck, there wasn't, nobody knew anything about slugging percentage, OPS, OPS+. Plus. These are numbers that are provided now where if guys... We're in Hall of Fame votes now. They probably want to come close to getting in. But how many of these names did you recognize? The one I recognized the most was Lloyd Wainer. Um, his brother, Paul Wainer, is one of the best pirates of all time. Again, Big Poison and Little Poison. Um, I also did not include, I forgot to mention, I did not include relief pitchers because their wars are always going to be low. Or else um, some of those were Bruce Sutter, 24.0, Lee Smith, 28.9 uh, we have trevor hoffman 28.0 raleigh fingers 25.6 so i did not include them but there you go the 10 lowest wars for non-relief pitchers in the hall of fame don't forget to subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe like the video share the video hit the bell for notifications